Hear now my words. If there's a prophet among you, I, the Lord, shall, say shall, make myself known to him in a vision, and I, what? Shall speak with him in a dream. Did he say this is a possibility or this is a definite? It's a definite. So God definitely declared if we're a prophetic people, which how many know this congregation is a prophetic group? Am I right? He said, I'm definitely giving you dreams. And I said, well, I didn't get a dream for the first 10 years of my Christian life. Well, it's because I didn't honor them, didn't ask for them, didn't believe in them, judged them, despised them. That's why. So now I've gotten over all that sickness, and I now honor and ask and receive, and I get dreams every single week. All right. Okay. That's the beginning of the Old Testament. God declares what he's going to do. Can we go forward to PowerPoint? And we'll get to the end of the Old Testament. Hosea, one of the minor prophets, God said, I did it. What I told you I would do, I've done it. He says, I have also spoken to the prophets, and I gave numerous visions through the prophets, and I gave parables. So God said, look, I told you I was going to do it, and I just want you to know I did it. Say he did it. Okay, so that's the Old Testament. How about the New Testament? Do they, they carry on with dreams in the New Testament? Acts 2.17, it shall be in the last days. If you believe we're in the last days, say amen. This verse applies to us right now. I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men, what? Shall see visions. Your old men, what? Shall dream dreams. All right. That's, that's clear declaration. All right. We're, that's for us. We get dreams and we get visions. But like I say, I didn't because I didn't believe in them, ask for them, honor them or put paper next to my bed to record them when I woke up. Now I do all those things and I do get dreams every week and you can too if you make that same change that I did. So that's the beginning of the New Testament. Let's go to the end of the New Testament and see what the end has to say. <clears throat> Last book of the Bible, Revelation. It's all vision, whole thing. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I heard a voice behind me like the sound of a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see. And that having your journal, pencil, and paper, and writing things down is an important part to receiving visions and receiving dreams. He received 22 chapters of visions and journaled them all out so we still have them today. So from Genesis to Revelation, God gave dreams and visions and declared he would continue to in the last days. If that's clear enough for you, would you say amen? amen. How many though that's basically irrefutable as to what God's intention and God's purpose is for us for dreams. And I live in a culture that has chosen not to, historically, not to honor dreams. I think they're going to change their mind. They're probably in the process of doing that. And uh, we're going to ask all of you to change your mind this weekend and honor dreams and receive from dreams because there's a lot of good stuff that, that comes through dreams. <clears throat> Can we go forward maybe one more PowerPoint, please? This will be our last PowerPoint tonight for my part of the section. Here's what God says he does through our dreams. The verse in the middle, I will bless Jehovah who has given me counsel. Yea, my heart instructs me in the night seasons. Wow. That's free counsel every night from the wonderful counselor, you tell me, how much is that worth? <laughs> how many vote for a million bucks? I mean, I could go to a counselor for 150, I can go to a psychiatrist for 250, or I can get an hour and a half of free counsel every night from the wonderful counselor. How many know that's a deal? Because how many know he gives the best counsel in the entire universe? So he's clearly said, look, dreams are counsel from me. They're counsel for me. Counsel. I said, really? They look like leftover pizza to me, you know, just, you know, all this ridiculous, weird things. He said, well, it's, symbol it's symbolic. How many know the dreams of the Bible are all symbolic? They are. All right, so uh, how, about a, how about if I give you a couple of my dreams before I turn this over to Charity and let her teach you some stuff, all right? Where God was giving me some counsel. This happened in 1979, and... Uh, I had just learned the four keys to hearing God's voice, which you all have those memorized, I'm sure. I'm sure you could all shout them out to me because I've taught them here for, what, 20, 25 years. <clears throat> Quiet yourself down, fix your eyes on Jesus, tune to spontaneity, and write. Say it together with me. 
Quiet yourself down, fix your eyes on Jesus, tune to spontaneity, and write. Well, those four keys God taught me from Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. And uh, the day he taught them to me, I tried them, and uh, they worked. And I went to Patty every half hour, and I showed her what I'd written, and it was, it, she said, she told me it was God. And it raised my level of faith, because I'd never done those four things together before as a bundle ever, and I went back and I journaled some more, journaled some more, and that day I journaled five hours. And I'm a guy who'd never heard, identified God's voice before in my life, and that particular day, I was able to write for five hours of God talking to me because I used those four keys as a bundle. Quiet myself down, pictured Jesus here with me, ask him a question, tune to flow, and the flowing thoughts that came back, I wrote them down. I got five hours of God talking to me. I thought, man, if I'd have known it was that simple, if somebody could have ever actually said that, I could have done that 10 years sooner, but no one was able to say this. Now, how about if you repeat this after me so you can say it? <laughs> say this, hearing God's voice is as simple as Quieting yourself down, fixing your eyes on Jesus, tuning to spontaneity, and writing. All right, so I did that for five hours. That night, I put paper and pencil next to my bed, asked God for a dream. I had not recalled a dream for nine months, but that simple act of putting paper and pencil there, I recalled three dreams that night. So tonight, if you want to put paper and pencil next to your bed and ask for a dream, you'll come back tomorrow with dreams. Here's the first dream I had. I'm, um, I have a new job. I'm the caretaker of a house. I'm going up the stairs into the bathroom, getting cleaning supplies out. I'm coming back down the stairs and I'm riding a horse. Now, if you've never ridden a horse up the stairs and turned it around in the bathroom and brought it back down, you have no idea how difficult this is. How many vote for a pizza dream here? May I just see your hands? How many vote for God giving wonderful counsel? May I see your hands? And how many don't want to vote until we interpret the thing, all right? You're very smart, I'm with you, okay? So, easiest way to interpret a dream is start with symbol one and ask what could it mean? Well, symbol one says I got a new job. So, since dreams come out of the day I'm living in, well, what was my new job that day? Well, that new job that day was the four keys to hearing God's voice. All right, so you're right, I did get a new job. I learned how to hear God's voice. So, how comfortable does that dream indicate I feel about these four keys of spontaneity, vision, journaling, and flow? Comfortable or uncomfortable? I feel really uncomfortable. I feel like a horse on the stairwell. I feel like a bull in the china closet. I said, God, I'm not into intuition. I'm not into flow. I'm not into pictures and journaling. I don't like any of those things. Matter of fact, I'm not good at it. I'm, I'm a theologian. I like boxes and charts and graphs. All right, so the dream said, yeah, I understand. You feel really uncomfortable about this new track you're on, this new job. However, if you stick with it and don't abandon it and whine and cry and just lay down and say, I can't do it, if you stick with it, guess what it's going to do? It's going to take you up a flight of stairs. Anyone want to take a while guess what that could symbolize? <laughs> higher place in God. How many think hearing God's voice and seeing vision can take you to a higher place in God? Amen?